I know. Supporting much of anything. I mean, we right by the tail skid. Hold it. She doesn't want to go forward. We can get her out on the front pull. It's those tires. Probably the originals. How's that wingtip? You're okay. You're going to swing now. Swing it around. Keep swinging. Just barely, but you got to turn. Just keep, it's got to be just turning now. Okay, turn a little more and you go back straight. That's it. Got it. Now, how are we going to take it up on there? That may prove to be a problem of major proportions. get this thing rebuilt and I hope you guys get uh, this thing uh, all set by the time the EA museum opens which uh, will be a little less than a year from now as you know it's convention time we're supposed to have all these things in the uh, museum. Think you can make it? I hope so. <laughs> okay. I'm Oh I don't know he's been in there. Step built right in there. There's no cushion. It's down too low. This is about the position I'd be in. When there's no cushion, we go way down. <laughs> <laughs> the closed course. And uh, it did that. Uh, it's powered by Curtis D12 engine. Uh, of uh, 1145 cubic inches, uh, 12 cylinder. Uh, bore and stroke is four and a half inch bore, six inch stroke. It's rated at 435 at 2300, I believe it was. I uh, put in higher compression pistons, turn it up to 2550, 2600. Real old type altimeter that I'd have picked up surplus somewhere way back when, but that's a real old type. Look at the size of it. And just nothing more but a fuel pressure gauge and a coolant temperature gauge, tachometer, gives you the RPM of the engine, and uh, oil pressure gauge and the switch. That's it. This is a throttle. And uh, see what the hell was this? <laughs> I don't remember what this was. <laughs> um, this is a wobble pump, but your tank was below the engine. And uh, there's a few pressures uh, because your tank was below and there's a fuel pump on it. And to be sure you had the carburetor full for starting, you had to work this a little bit, to, which is really a manual pump. Whoa. Oh, I'm not that certain how, but no easier to get into and out of than it was then, is it? Well, it's not. It wasn't bad. It was a. Was a oh, is there some way that'll fit in there? It might go this way. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Put my 
figure. There. Some improvement. Yeah, that's uh yeah, this is yeah, that fairly like fairly close to where it was. It was fast. And all you had to see was the pylon. Hey Lee. Hi there. Are you open? Sure. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Well, I think I'll get out of this. Well, you know, I'm if I can.
Dan, I've got the back. Why don't you slip forward for me or somebody over there? Yeah, I'll take that out of it. Uh, we got to keep this thing lined up. I can't. Project will begin in Oshkosh, only this time it's an airplane. This is the experimental craft Steve Whitman used to race back in the late 1930s. Bonzo was one of the fastest planes in its time. It was used by Whitman during the Thompson Trophy races, that's the Indy 500 for airplanes. And how does the plane's owner feel about its being restored? Well, of course, you can imagine how I feel uh, just having it in, um, in a museum, but to have it in the EA Museum right in your hometown, that is something else. Huh? The plane is being restored by the Oshkosh EAA chapter and will be donated at the EAA Museum. The chapter does need help, and you may contact the Parkway Garage at 231-6930. Uh, You know, actually, for surgery, you can the work back and you can open up, open up to this right here and cut away from the inside, whatever. I need something to cut skin back and cutting the stitches out of all the fabric on the wing ribs here. Trying to get this all off in one piece.
Hold up her. Oh, it's connecting on the bottom. Thank you. 
Stitch that fabric on. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> okay, so you're going to completely replace this piece. Yeah. Then how? Because all the tears and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're going to put a new piece in, you want to have all the tears. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They also suggested not putting this cut in, putting the piece on first. And they got yeah. this yeah. off. Yeah. Is that all right? Putting, sure. a, putting a hole shaped hole in here so that the strut can come through on the angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to make a new one there too, but if it's easier, well, I'd like to uh, get pretty desperate. We'll try. I think it suggests first the upsetting that, flattening the rivets, taking uh, and uh, smooth well, them out, and uh, try and rework the part first before getting desperate and start from scratch. It's straight except for this area right up in here. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah what was the an opening for I don't remember. You see the curves are here, but they're different. But it is here, this is different. See, this is on stretch yeah. here. To get around this uh, uh, gear housing here for the camp. 1026, October 26th. And as you can see, we've got the rib, rib off. We've got our super craftsman uh, straightening it out, reinforcing it. We've got uh, all the bad gusses torn off the trailing edge. And we've got most of them replaced. We've got another super craftsman over here replacing him right now. <laughs> After we laminated up our eighth inch uh, plywood to make quarter inch out of it. And uh, the tip is getting sanded down. So within another week or so we're going to... Coat of tautening dope. After you've pulled up your fabric where it it's probably will look something like this. Real snug, straight, all the way across. Then what you do is you measure off from uh, we do the leading edge, leading edge to the trailing edge. This looks equal on both sides. And on a wing where you would have gone out the minimum on this because you got a the one inch. Yeah. yeah. And then what you would do is start back here and then drop your chalk line. Measure at each end, this end, this end, and then drop your chalk line across the way also on the other side. Then where the chalk line is crossed next to each rib and make sure you go in next to each rib, you would take your needle and come right down to the chalk line and then just push in next to the rib. Then both sides would be punched open. This way you can get a light behind it. You can see where you're going so you don't poke your partner in the eye and, and back and forth. Then you would, after you have all the holes punched, that's when you would want to start rib stitching. And then you start from the leading edge to the trailing edge. If he didn't do it that way, and not everybody does, don't worry about it. it it's no, no big thing. You would want to do it yeah, just as long as you're doing it back the way he has. Okay, now as long as you've got that running, I'm going to run through the starting stitch. Tony, you want to get on the other end of the back? Okay. Maybe you can hit the hole coming back. How could you, how could you hit that, that, uh, <laughs> that hole on the other side? <laughs> yeah, this is through. a lot easier. <laughs> you can lock okay. up little holes to find it. Huh? 
Uh, you, can actually, yeah. you can actually see the hole with a light. Over with the light going through? You have a light on each side. Yeah. You put a light on there. You can actually, once you get them all pre-punched, okay. you okay. can get down there and you can just Does much light come through it. the fabric? Yeah. Can you see quite well even yeah. with the shadow? You on get it? those little clamp-on lights and clamp them on so the, you know, it's right there next to the fabric and you can, okay. you can look right down through there and know where you're aiming. So the guy in the back puts his eyeball to the whole thing. <laughs> <thing. laughs> And you do end up guiding the guy yeah. because a lot of times you can't find it. So you'll say up or down or right or left. Are you going to play yes. that back to them? Yeah. Okay. You want to come up here with that so you can really get in on this? Square or not? And this is. And now, again, I don't know if Steve did this, but you would put a square knot on the back, a square knot on the top, followed by two half inches. Some people don't do that. It's, it depends upon, you know, as long as you're doing it the way he did. You come behind this one. Come up right behind your square knot and lay in your stitch. And another one behind it. That is the beginning knot. A square knot on get that out of the way on both sides and then the last square knot before you start your same knot would have the two halves in front of it and then snug that up really good and tight now going let's say you're going to put all your knots on this side or in the center wherever he did it I don't know I'll leave them right in the center let's do it that way okay I'm going to pass that through there okay this is the modified seam Lay your needle on your rib. You've gone in through here, come back. Lay your needle on your rib. Go up underneath your cord. Pull your cord through. And what you end up with is a small, let me loosen that up. You end up with this small loop right there. It, it's tiny, I don't know if you can see it. Then you go, you lay your needle back on your rib. The cord running from the last knot to the next knot. Put your needle on your rib, go under, bring it around. And go under again. Now, in order to tighten up your knot, and I find men have a great deal of trouble with this. Number one, because they want to muscle it through. But all it takes is a little leverage to keep snugging that knot up. Put your thumb right behind the knot and pull it off. I'll do one more. Okay, all you've done is gone from the last knot up around the back of the wing, back up through. You lay your needle on your rib, go up underneath, now lay your needle on your rib, go out, come around, Go back under. It's good if it, you leave a little slack, but I want to show you what you're doing here. Bring your needle straight up. Leave a little room to put your fingers in so you can get a little grip on this. And 
I usually do something like this, you know, I get, I get it twisted around my fingers, work it back and forth, snug it up, put your finger behind the knot, pull it off. And you would be wanting to look for the type of consistency that you've got back through here on that cord. You wouldn't want slack in the cord. You also wouldn't, when, when, you, when this is all doped, you won't end up with the wrinkles that you have in here. So no, this don't is worry about tight. that part now. All you're going to try and do now is to get the knots and get the tightness. Now, this, this cord, some people pull it through the middle. Some people, they do a lot of things with it. For my own, I like to do it this way because when I come back over with my surface tapes, I just pull it around here like so, up through the next one. And then I sort of cut it off right here at an angle so it stays underneath the cord like that. And then you, again, you get away from the air bubble, the, the large, if you leave the knot on top, you get a tendency to get an air bubble in there. Now, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> you, don't, you don't poke the, the thing through. I've seen demonstrations where they, they the, 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 this this particular piece right here is is actually Pulled inside. Pulled back through. Right. Yeah. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. I think. Uh, normally, no. Most of the cotton aircraft uh, race it, pulls it back through, and snips it off. Maybe that's. Yeah. I saw a guy at the AAA yeah. demonstrate. That's what he. That's what he does. But that's he does the same knot, but he does it running underneath from point A to point B. Right. And we're not supposed to do that with this picture. Okay. Not, that isn't the way they did it with cotton. You can, it's just a matter, now that's something that's a matter of personal preference. Okay. It's for appearances, really. You guys are doing this. Yeah. Well, if we learn to do it right, we'll I go and check and see I how he did it. it. Anyway. Whatever way that was. <laughs> this way, here, let me get that. I don't stab anybody. I do it the convention all the time. Regularly I stab poor folks. <laughs> and then, uh, and some not so poor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All oh, those Warbirds types, they don't come down and watch this stuff. No, they come over, <laughs> I do it for them, and they make a nice, generous donation. There you go. Good thinking. That's where it goes. You guys didn't know I started a new club this year, did you? Ann must have told you. Yeah, no. I bet I screwed this all up. The Ultra Light Warbird Division? <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. But these guys have God that's a good start. I have fun with that. Well, how that started was we were getting ready for the ultralight convention. Okay, now this is a square knot on the other side. That's the one I started with over there. There you go. All right, I see what you've done. Okay. And then the two half hitches behind it. Well, how that started was we were getting ready for the ultralight convention. And Ann said somebody had to drop, or Paula said somebody had to drop some uh, material off at the Warbird site for the ultralight convention. And I looked at Ann and I says, my God, they've got uh, Warbird ultralights? And we started laughing. And then, well, one thing led to another, and we had antique classics and the whole thing. So. I got to laughing about that, and I went back and I had a badge made up. It says, uh, Ultralight 82, Warbird Division. Mm. <laughs> well, then it got, well, little by little everybody asked about it and it got carried away. And so Ann put out a newsletter and we had antique class, uh, we had Warbird, uh, Ultralight 82, so. antique classics. We had uh, Ultralight 82, sure. uh, uh, aerobatic division, and they had it upside down, aerobatic. Out of strength. And we all had our numbers, number one, two, three, and four. And then so Ann put out the newsletter, and being as how it was my idea, I was the founding mother. Founding mother. Yeah. I'm the mother founder. Oh, God, we just roared about that. Strong or not, add strength. Oh, okay, here we go, guys. You shouldn't have to add strength to this here. You should have enough to go right down the hole. This is why I said always measure. But I can't break. Cord break on me. Yeah, I really can't. So there is a way to add to the cord there, right? Now. Yeah. 
Now this one you guys should all learn really easy. Everybody knows fish. Everybody knows how to fish, right? Okay. Do you see, George? This is in the cam manual and uh, one, two, three, four, and you want to place this in a particular spot. That's the only trick to this knot, is you want to place it in a very precise spot. Why? So it's in between your wing. <laughs> okay, leave the loop and you do this again. And you go through here. Now I cannot do this without using my teeth, but I will give it a good go. Now, okay, let's say you're going to go through right up here, okay? You have to measure enough distance where you're going to get that through the wing, make your knot, and not have this show. It should be right in here. Because it's a knot, if any of you guys fish, as you well know, it will pull against itself. And all you do is keep working it back and forth until it tightens itself up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, that's, that's the way it's supposed to look. That's your knot. Well, we'll go through the fabric. We'll, of course, we're we'll bringing a hole. Here. This is the way about that small hole that will be there because you're going to put tapes over this anyway. I'll show you how I put that. I have to put that through the hole. I have a little style all of my own anyway. Where'd you go? You are oh, right. there you are. Right here. Okay, I'm just checking. Get your finger here so I can get some blood in there. Tainted feather. Yeah. All right. Now when you get to pulling this through, do it this way so you really don't get an enlarged hole. Just... Well, we don't have dope on here, so it's going to be a little more difficult. All I do is work it down through there. What about cutting off excess string? Yeah. What I do for myself... You can, you can leave an inch of string on there and water it. Well, as Ray Stitz puts it, you don't want to leave anything for the mice. What I do is I put a little square knot behind that and cut it off right to the square knot. Oh, cold water removes blood off the wing. <laughs> you mean people have that problem? All the time. <laughs> so? You've got to be able to play a pool. And so, there you go. Ooh, and these things we wrap around the fingers there. Now, work it back and forth across the rib to, to take all the tension out of the cord. Oh, I got you. Okay. See? And just slide it back and forth across the rib. I'm not, I didn't have a, I have a... Yeah, it takes a little practice on the grip. You'll get, uh, you know, you will get comfortable with it. That's a good way to get in the eye. You have to put it in your mouth. Oh, yeah. You betcha. I can see that already. That figures here. Let's see what you got. <laughs> I don't have anything here so far. No, we'll have a phone line to the hospital in case one of these guys swallows the needle. Now, has that thing rolled in there yet or not? Here. You can really pull it up. Well, that works. Well, we did it, right? We want to get it to the point where you'll come over to it and keep it next to the rib. Why do you explain otherwise, what you're doing? You, you, you may have to bend the needle. Oh, otherwise, if you... Oh! <laughs> 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 
Oh yeah, that's something else too. Underneath. When you get around to this, the first entry is opposite the last knot. On the opposite side of the rib of the last knot. Down around through the other side of the rib across the fabric and bring your needle back up again. Lay your needle on the rib, come up underneath your cord. Leave enough slack in there, just even, make sure your thread comes straight across so it makes a nice even line. Lay your needle on the rib, go out underneath your cord. Bring your needle up over. Well, we got all the, the rotten wood or loose wood repaired. Everything is varnished and sanded, and we've got uh, the first half of the fabric on this wing. That wing is completely done as far as covering. And as soon as we get this one on tonight, we'll shrink it with water, and, and then of course uh, next week we'll start doping. And then I'll clip clip for here. Okay. Just we want to curl up right around the top, wouldn't it? Well, just about three quarters of the way, just like you did the other one. All right. Three quarters of the way around the wood, you mean? Yeah. 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 
Oh, I thought you were going to come around and slice that right off for me. Well, I can't, can't get through. Can't get through, through. okay. Right, so, it doesn't really make any difference which way you cut this side. Go ahead. The ends of the spars stick out of the, of the root rib, and we have to trim the cloth around it to allow for that. That's where the spars plug into the beef spar. Right. Right. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes, you can. Oh, oh, I deal with a lot of farmers. <laughs> You'd be surprised what they got in there. I'm one of the feet. That's what you said, right, George? Hey, beautiful. Now, this way. Actually, tacked on. The fabric is draped over here. I'll just glue it all around the edge. Do you glue on the uh, ribs, too? Eventually, after we shrink the, no. after we shrink the covering. No, you, you no, sew it on. Well, yes, but you also, you also glue it on. Oh, over the top. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing over there? What George told me to do. <laughs> uh, we we're gluing the edges on with the, this uh, buter, butyrate dough. No, it's nitrate. Nitrate, no. Okay. And it does not, it does not shrink any of the fabric. All it does is it's the same thing that, it, that, that a model airplane dope does when you're building a stick model airplane. Got a camera with camera stay. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. That is just, just like a big city, guys. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting fabric for the for the elevators and uh, flaps are already done. The ailerons are laying there. When we get done with this, we'll start gluing on that. When do we get? Uh, we're going to get it all glued and all damped. Or, yeah, yeah, we'll damp these down. tonight. And, and everything will be glued and damped and before we start on anything else. Is that? Mm -hmm. No? We'll start on anything else after we get this tamped out. We don't, we don't want to stop. <laughs> you want me to just fold this one up too, like so here? Yeah. Here's, here's some little clips. These, yeah. these littler ones work better. What would be wrong with regular spring close things? Nothing. Attractive. Just, just, just warm it up so it sets it a little bit. Then we can shrink it. I got, I got this set real low, so. Yeah, just so you warm it up enough, see, then the heat will set it, set the glue. We, we'll be able to get by with. Uh, Soaking her down. Okay, I got it. I got the idea now. I'm just laying a warm iron up against the flat surfaces where the dope uh, was put on the edges to hold the fabric in order to set the dope. And hopefully. My iron cord? Yeah, that's all set. And hopefully. For George's instructions, this will work out just fine. <laughs> what? You have to get me in on it. I'll fix that. Here's the glue we're using. Uh, -E D-W-E-I-S-E-R. <laughs> See you take a shot of glue. Here, that was shut you up for a while. <laughs> Oh. 
another piece done. I'm sure that your wife would not want this done with the family iron. <laughs> well, you should see what an iron gets like when you do super seat. Holy Moses. Your, your hands really get glued up. It gets so thick you can just take it right off. Peel it right off. thinner, 50% and we're trying to force it through the fabric but not a heavy enough so it drips through the other side. So that's, that's all there is. That's the first coat. The second coat will get, be a little heavier dope and after the third coat we'll rip stitch. You ever put any pure dope on it or, or not? Oh, well you gotta keep it thin enough so it'll flow so you can uh, uh -huh. You can't have it uh, full strength because it, it just gets gobby to get it in gobby. Oh, oh, oh. oh, let it rain. I've answered that damn thing 20 times for this. Hey, well, that's enough. Heck with it. <laughs> <laughs> Work well. Oh, we're snapping. Uh, we marked off the old patterns and we're snapping the lines oh, for the grip stitching right now. All right. 